G'day guys and welcome to FanCast where we have a proper footy chat. We're here at the wonderful St Kilda uh, Sporting Club here. A lot of history here at the club and we are so grateful to be here. G'day FanCasters and welcome to another episode here on the channel where we have a proper footy chat. Yes, guys, we're here once again in the glorious St. Kilda Sports Club on the bench. Thank you, Dave. That's what this is called, a bench. Not a sofa, not a couch, not a chair. It's a bench. And welcoming here to the bench, we've got, of course, Marcus from the Old Dark Woods. How's it going, man? Hey, mate. Thank you very much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, in this environment as well, it's great. Oh, Love man, it. it's awesome. We are very, very lucky to be here. Much, massive shout out to you, Apollo. You're an absolute superstar, Dave, of course. And to you for accepting our invitation to come on because I think we've got you at a great time here. We've got you at a wonderful time as a Carlton fan. Uh, we don't have Carlton fans on enough. But when we yeah. do get them on, we like to get them when they're at their worst. Yeah. <laughs> at, our, at our passionate best, you'd say. Yes, when, when exactly. When it's like this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not the best timing, but I think things will turn. But I'm sure we'll get into it. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, fresh off a... Fresh off a 52-point <laughs> loss to the Swans yeah, there. Yeah. I was going to say 56, but I wanted to be sure just in case. So, yeah, 52-point yeah. loss to the Swans who are just flying high, top of the ladder, two games clear of us, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, but, mate, they're, they're in ripping form. Did you sort of expect you boys to get a win that week or did you know it was always going to be tough? Uh, I mean, it was always going to be tough. And then you look at our injury list and – um, you know, it's, it's the second worst in the AFL at the moment, but I've never been one to use injuries as an excuse. And, and you look at the players that we had out there, that's multiple All-Australians, Coleman medalists, Brownlow medalists, you know, A-grade players in the competition that were all there. Yeah. Um, so we had the players to do it and we were good enough in that first quarter, absolutely jumping them and we were playing really good footy and, and then to really not give a yelp. And you don't want to say we gave up, but it certainly looked like it mm. um, in that second half of the game. So I definitely didn't expect that margin and that performance. So that was a bit concerning. But on the other, on the other hand, it's like hey, Sydney were bloody elite. They're going to take some, some beating this year, I think. Oh, for sure. I mean, how the hell did they lose to Richmond? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. The, the biggest mystery in footy this year, isn't it? Can someone please check the water um, that week? If we can <laughs> retrospectively go back in time, check the water. What was in that Gatorade, yeah. honestly? Because that makes no sense. But I mean, you guys are—you guys are shaping to be first quarter specialists. Yeah. You were beating the living socks off of Melbourne the week before, yeah. and then they came back, and then you started off really strong against the Swans yeah. over there. Took the crowd right out of it. It's just like I don't know. For me, I was—I was watching with a bunch of mates. I'm like. Is this going to be Melbourne all over again or mm. are you going to go ahead? But it turns out it was yeah. pretty well, close to Melbourne. Mate, again. I was saying the exact same thing in the first quarter. I'm like, nah, just let's not get too excited. We've seen this before. I mean, even go back last year to the prelim, we kicked the first five That's goals right. against Brisbane and That's then right. got overrun. So, like, we're known to do this with this team. Um, so, I never get too excited when we've got a, a four or five goal lead because you never know in these days. And it's not just us. I think momentum in footy is massive as well and any team can just, you know, crawl back any lead. Um, so... I mean, oh, I said this over the weekend as well. It's like I'd almost rather be chasing a lead than yeah. holding a lead. For you're sure. so much more vulnerable when you're when you're holding a lead. Um, oh, Sam but, Mitchell. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. I mean, geez, that was that was a wild finish. So, and that's that's more heartbreaking when you when you lose like that. So, I mean, when you're chasing a lead, it's more exciting. But at the end of the day, if we could just you know kick five goals every quarter, that would be nice. But, oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, just we're become a bit of a theme lately with us it's not great would love a bit of more of an even spread over the four quarters but oh well so so what happens this week oh yeah you, you you've mentioned it i mean you got a lot out at the moment yeah Pitney's is also going to be out now yeah. he's re-injured that finger you know it's, it's a good thing though you got the gold coast suns here the, the sun's not shining very strongly over melbourne these days so i don't think it's going to continue i think yeah. you guys should still get the dub yeah. over over the suns and You've had a really tough run to this point, but it should open up on the run home. And I, I, I personally anticipate that's why I'm sort of enjoying it now as I can, you know, mm. obviously with you guys being down because you're missing so many plays, you've also had a really tough run. Yep. I know it's going to turn yep. it, with the fixture, with the players returning, yep. I'm just sort of lapping it up right now. Yeah. I think that's, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. Like a lot of people are 
a lot of Carlton supporters are losing their mind, but not as much as we have in, in previous years because we saw what we did last year in the, yeah. in the back end and we, we know we can turn things around really quickly. And then with the players that we've got out, the fixture that we've got post by, like even the next month is still bloody hard. Yeah. It's like teams like Gold Coast and Essendon that we probably expected to be easier games than the ones that we played are now really hard games looking where, you know, where Essendon is and even Gold Coast coming off their, their big wins in Darwin. So it doesn't get any easier. And then we've got Port Adelaide over there and then we played Geelong again before the bye. So it's like it, it doesn't get much easier until post bye. Um, so by then you'd think we'd have most of our players back anyway, oh, barring yeah. any more injuries. So, yeah, I think, I think it will we'll be fine. Um, I think we're, we're too good of a team not to be. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, trying to get players fit and just fixing up a few things in game as well. Oh, I, I don't think Carlton fans should be losing their minds at all. Like if you compare where you are right now compared to where you were after you lost to us last year, and then obviously that yep. led to that metamorphosis and you guys just completely – couldn't lose a game essentially from that point on. You yeah. dropped it at the end to the Giants, but you didn't it was really a dead care. Rubber. You yeah. were already in the finals. You were already sewn up, just freshening yourself up. You know, so like if you compare to where you were almost this time last year, it's yeah. like it's night and day. You can clearly see that there is upside. Whereas before last yeah. year, you didn't have that foundation, I suppose, that you could refer to that we've done it before. Yeah, correct. That was your first time. So now. Yeah. You know, like you guys are absolutely fine. Yeah. And there is a lot of trauma though within with Carlton supporters. I mean, we've <laughs> we've got twenty years, well, over twenty years of of this sort of stuff happening and and never recovering from it. So we've got last year as that reference point, which is which is good. It helps. They know we're coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They know we're coming. Correct. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, we've had it. We don't worry. Uh, you know, I feel like we're we're almost like cousins at this point. Like we've 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 both yeah. we've both shared that same cup of disappointment, yeah. of false hopes, of false dawns. Yeah. Um, and just the same way I'm lapping up you guys for having a tough point right now, I'm lapping up where we are at the moment because I don't know if it's going to last. Like I don't know when it's going to end because mm. we've had it for so many years where we've started off all right. Yeah. I mean, we were fifth on the ladder with five weeks to five games yeah. to go and finished off 11. So yeah. like it's so you, just, you don't have that trust there yet. No, nah, no, nah, still not there. Even though I declared a couple of weeks ago that the lid's <laughs> off and we're playing finals, but still, like it's yeah. I got carried away in the momentum a little bit of things yeah. like that 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 win against the Giants. But I mean. Yeah. Oh, Everyone's been in the Giants now. Correct. I mean, that's it's not as well. We yeah, that was our last real like really good win as well against the Giants at Marvel. So looking back, it's probably not as great as it was at the time. I know. Like so. they've they got pounced on by the Bulldogs. Yep. And the Bulldogs couldn't kick to save their lives. They should have won still, by more the And they still yeah. won comfortably yeah. over there as well. So it's like, what's going on? Like you know, you've got players that teams that started hot. Really cooling down. Then you got players. Then you got. Then you got the swans who are just still flying high. They're just flying, yeah. And but so, yeah, it's funny. Like yeah, the giants and the cats, are arguably the premiership favourites a few weeks ago. Yeah. Of now on these these long losing streaks and and playing pretty ordinary. Let's be honest. Like I think Geelong were really bad last week and oh. and then the week before as well. So um, yeah, it's funny how things can change very quickly in this game. They say one week's a long is a long time of football. Yeah. It's very true. Yep. I imagine three weeks. Like surely now there should be. I know people out there will say, oh, Geelong's rested. You know, there was no Cameron. There was no yeah. Hawkins. It's like, yeah, all right. I, I get it. No danger field. But like without them, you're sort of seeing what's left behind. Mm. And it's not winning games of football. Mm. So that should be a bit of a concern. Yeah. 100%. I think. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's like Geelong love managing their players and their list throughout the year. And then they mm. know how to peak at the right time. So that's true. It didn't work from last year, um, but you know, in years gone past, like we just know how good Geelong are at managing their list and putting you into like a false sense of security and thinking that they're gone and they're done for the year. But and they'll they'll come strong and and they win ninety nine percent of their games at home, so That's they've true. got that luxury as well. So, but I, they've I'm, got the Giants there at home now, and the Giants. Week, yeah. have, well, we'll talk about it later, but. Just the Giants, I think I've beaten them the last few times at GMHA. I think they have actually, yeah. I think so, they got them last year down there. That would be, yeah. that would be, if that happens, they'll be four on the trot yeah. for a team that was seven on the trot winning and, and they were yeah. the last undefeated team. Correct. Jeez, yeah. man. This, this, this season is so wide open <laughs> at crazy. the moment. It's crazy. unreal. And so that's why if you're a Swans fan, absolutely be happy with where you're at the moment. But things can change and the Swans have absolutely been blessed with not as many injuries compared to other teams. So yes, obviously they had no Tom McCart in the last couple of weeks. I thought, you know, him being out would have given you a lot more of a sniff with your powerful dynamic forward line. And it looked like it was going to be that way. And then Harry Mackay just 
Look how I had to hit goals again. How did he miss that sitter in front of the sticks? Yeah, that, again, that, you, know, so you speak about trauma that just brought us, <laughs> brought us back to last year when Harry was missing all those, all those goals. But then he's had such a good year. He's, he been, he's been incredible this year, Harry. So it's like you can probably give him one or two of those classic missed shots that he does. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it just, it just hurts, especially against a good team like Sydney and you're trying to capitalise and kick some important goals. And when Harry does that, it, it really hurts. And then he kicks one from outside 50 beautifully. So I think... His range is he's better when he's further out from goal, which is funny. But mm. um, but you'll take that from Harry. I think he's been sensational this he year. He has been unreal. Yeah. I mean, it's it's I've noticed that is the same for Drake Stringer this year for us. Like, yeah. puts Drake Stringer set shot twenty five meters out, twenty meters directly in front, he'll miss it, he'll blow it, it's, and yeah. and I'll call it. I'm like, oh no, this shot's way too easy. Mm. Drake has to be hemmed up on the boundary line, fifty five meters out, and he'll kick yeah. this drop punt, and it will sail through. And he did mm. against the against the ruse. He did it. But then he missed the other ones. So like, <laughs> like it's it's like, look, you yeah. gotta take the good with the bad. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, I mean, everyone raves about Charlie Kerno for us, and he's yeah. like this crazy. Well, he's a crazy forward, crazy player. Yeah, but he he does silly things from time to time as well. So I think it's you just gotta yeah you gotta take the good with the bad, and um, they're outstanding players at the end of the day. So and not every player is going to be a hundred percent conversion oh. rate. So no, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, and you can speak about Stringer. I think he's been having, having a sneaky good year as well. He has been, absolutely. He's um, been a major reason for why we've been doing all right. We've been throwing him on the ball a lot more, um, just providing us some grunt through the midfield. I mean, it's it's contract year, Jake Stringer. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Essendon, every- Essendon, don't let him sign <laughs> that contract yet. you got to keep him playing good. He has to earn those dollars. Um <laughs> Oh, speaking of someone who has to earn their dollars, now this person I don't think is going to be earning dollars anytime soon, and it's Taron Thomas. Yeah, he's he's done so I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. I think with everything that's been said recently in in society, really, and then with the the stand that the AFL took the other week with yeah. the the minute silence and everything, and yeah. the, their stand on domestic violence, I think it's just it would be the biggest double standard if they were to let Taron Thomas play. Um, it would be an embarrassment really to the 100%. AFL if they let him play. So. Super disappointing, you know, for him and um, and yeah, and the people that are involved. Like, just yeah, it's a terrible situation. The AFL also stepped in to stop uh, Wayne Carey from getting yep. elevated to, I think, legend status. I think, I think it was yeah. um, out there at the SCG. Also, around that time, which was really good. And now the AFL has come out, issued a statement today that pending investigations and pending the results of what's happened is not allowed to be an AFL footballer. And that's the type of stance that we need from the AFL. Yep. You've got a platform, you've got a position, and you're in a, you know, you've got the ability to actually act, not just simply have words in terms of we need to do this, we need to do that, but actually putting your front foot forward knowing that he's a very talented player. Despite him putting bums on seats and therefore money in the pockets, still there's more to life, there's more to the game than just the money things. You also have to... Walk the walk. Yeah. So well done to the AFL. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And you think, I mean, it's hard to compare workplaces and things like that. Like, and a lot of people do. But, you know, if he was in any other week, it'd be like, there'd be, there's zero tolerance for that sort of stuff. So I think the AFL need to, yeah, be stronger and, and it seems like they are, which is good. Good yeah. to see. 100%. Um, you got someone else who needs to be stronger. Uh, not even just one person. The whole mob of you. The St. Kilda Football Club. What is going on over there? And he doesn't need to toughen up, yeah, don't they? Yeah. What is going on? What is it's? I mean, we, we, no one probably expected the Saints to be a a top four or a top six team. Nah. I think everyone probably expected them to drop off a little bit and not play finals. But geez, to be in, I think they're, they're bottom four. I think at the moment. So they are to be or they're very close to it. Um, and they're just not playing great footy oh, either. Sorry, fourteen. Fourteen. I mean, <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Yeah. And they're just not playing inspiring footy. Um, they're just really hard to watch, and I'm sure all the Saints fans can agree with that. They're, oh, they're all they're all pretty fed up with it too. So, I mean, it, it puts more pressure on on Ross Lyon if there is any pressure. It doesn't feel like there is, but I think there should be. Honestly, if if Ross wasn't who he is, he'd absolutely be under so much more pressure. Yeah. I mean, we sort of spoke about this a little bit off air. The steak knives were out and being absolutely sharpened. This time last year with, with Voss. Yeah. Like when, when Vossi was having that rough patch and everyone was out, you got to sack Voss. I can't do it right. Just simply get someone else in there. The list is better. And they sort of, they axed Ratton. 
thinking that, hey, we're going to get our guy in. He's going to yeah. turn the club around. They've recruited. They've brought some people in. I know they brought Henry in. Played his first. He came back from injury a couple of weeks ago. But it's just like, they're just not firing. They just can't kick a winning mm. score. Yeah. Yeah. I think it probably comes back to that messiah approach that it just doesn't work. Yeah. And it, it's never worked. Historically, has never worked, especially in the modern, the modern era. Um, I mean, to a, a certain extent, you look at, at Clarks and it's like, you know, people were probably expecting an instant fix with North Melbourne. That's mm. probably not happening. And he was coming under a little bit of pressure as well this year. So obviously different spectrums, North Melbourne and St Kilda. But, yeah, yeah just think, you know, when you, when you go to sack a coach to bring someone in, it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're cheating on someone because but you've got this backup option. You know, it's like it just – it's not a good look. Um, so just that – it's never worked. I mean, I know it firsthand with Carlton. You know, yeah. Ratton got sacked, funnily enough, with McMulthouse. Yeah. So it just doesn't work. Yeah, Not like in we this era. and we we uh, we didn't keep Palmer Thompson at the helm. We brought back James Hurt mm. when he was when he had his suspension. And I don't want to speak more about what happened after that. All right, let's uh, <laughs> this is, uh, let's keep the trauma in the past, shall we? Um, but like hundred um, percent, you look at. I want to say this, mate. Hey, uh, Ross Lyon, how's the vibes over there at St. Kilda, mate? Oh, the vibes. He wasn't feeling the vibes when he was coming to the Bombers to, to see whether or not he wanted to get the job or not. He just didn't feel the vibes. Mm. I wonder how the vibes are like at St. Kilda <laughs> these days. Just uh, checking in, asking for a mate, that's all. Um, I'm sure <laughs> we're very glad not to have you is all, I, is all I'll have to say. We've got Brad Scott and we're flying at yeah. the moment. So, yeah, St. Kilda, they really need to work on that ball movement. They need to get some bounce. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just feel like there are other teams that are also in a bit of a rut. So you sort of mentioned Geelong. Can't discount them because they're Geelong. They've mm-hmm. done it time and time again. And bastards. It's just refused to die. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, it's so annoying. Yeah. Um, I'm just hoping that this is the year that they finally die and give us a chance. Yeah, oh, no, I like, know. I think, yeah, when they beat us a few weeks ago, that was actually their last win. And I remember I was more frustrated, not that we lost, but the fact that Geelong are just good again. Yeah. And it's like, I've just had enough of it. Like, just let someone else contend and, and finish in the top four in the finals. Like, we're just, how can the team? I mean, it's probably just incredible it's jealousy. Us too. It's, it's just us two, yeah. It's jealousy <laughs> because we can't, it, you know, we work so hard to get to that position where Geelong just do it every bloody year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Again, we're not going to write them off at, at round 11, but things are looking good for the rest of the competition if they continue this form. We're not writing them off, but. We're hoping them off. Yeah, hoping <laughs> we're, them off. We're, 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 we're praying for their downfall. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but there are a couple of other teams that we're not praying on their downfall. So GWS, you know, I, I think every, no one really dislikes the Giants. I mean, they've got a pretty sick uh, social media team. Yeah. If only their team on field was performing the same way that their social media team performs and they win in the grand final every single year. But, like, right. they've, um, they've really fallen off. They've now mm. lost. Three in a row, same as the same as the cats that we've just spoken about, yeah. and they've got their full list. Mm. What's going on? Yeah. People just found them out. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's crazy because we were talking about a month ago. Everyone was like, the Giants are almost that unstoppable team, aren't they? Yeah. Like they were they were the flag favourites above Sydney, and to see where they've gone now, it's just, it's crazy. Um, they do have a really really strong team. I think they're one that's they're going to find their form eventually, and we saw that last year. They had a massive run home and arguably the best team in it. Um, they do have injuries. Like they've got a, they've got a fair few at the moment. Again, it's just it's it's hurting some of these contending teams. These injuries, so it's it's and it's hard to put your finger on exactly why. Like obviously injuries aren't everything, but they're not playing great footy. We mentioned the dogs no. the dogs game before. Like they were they were poor, really oh. really poor in that game in the wet as well against a team that had been you know struggling and not really flying at all. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's an interesting one. If they lose, I think they've actually lost four in a row. I think Geelong have lost three. Giants oh, four. So geez. this week it's going to be that one of those losing streaks are going to continue this week. So yeah, oh you talk about scripting. God. It's the best. It's the best game possible this week 100%. to see those two go at it. And you know the, the cats look a bit vulnerable. The but they might get Jazza Cameron back this week, and that would be a massive boost for them. Yep. Um, the Giants they've still got Tom Green in there. They've got Canelio. They've Oh, Kelly is out. That's Kelly's a, that, out. That's a yeah. massive out for them. He, I think he went out last week. Yeah. So he's a massive out. Lockie Ash is out. Yeah. But they've still got, you know, Sam Taylor. They've still got Buckley. Yeah. You know, they've still got those Iden. They've still got some great defensive Jesse players. Jesse Hogan's still there. Jesse Hogan's still forward uh, with, uh, with Cadman. 
Um, I think the big one is Toby Green. He's just not. He's not in form. Yes, he's the one. It shows how reliant they are on him. Yes, and you saw last year they're through their run. He was arguably the best player in the competition in the back half of last year. So it shows how reliant they are on on Toby. And he's he's barely he's barely done it. Like really, he's had no impact this year. He's had no impact. He was completely he was completely blanketed by uh, by our Jake Kelly. Yeah. Who gets blanketed yeah. by Kelly? Like, no disrespect to you, Kelly. I love you the bits, right? You're an Essendon player. But, like, who, who yeah. gets wrapped up by him? And yeah. this is Toby mother flipping green. You know what I mean? Like, he's supposed to be one of the best players in the comp. So, yeah, yeah no, nah, he needs to lift. He needs to get out of that. On the flip side, the team that they lost to, the Bulldogs. Bevo was completely facing everyone. Like, even I was calling out for him to be sacked because one well, my super coach players, he's dropping all of them. So I'm thinking <laughs> Bevo's got to go under all this sort of pressure, no Libba because of the concussions. And I don't even think Bonson Pelly is necessarily lighting everything up. And mm. yet they're still getting the job done now, back-to-back mm. weeks in, in pretty fine fashion. Have the Bulldogs finally turned a corner and we couldn't see them make the eight? It's, it's, yeah, they're in such an interesting one, aren't they? Like they've got... I think they've they've got enough good players in their team that they're going to have these these wins, these crazy wins that people don't expect. But mm-hmm. then they've got this they've got this in them where they just drop <laughs> games to the bottom four teams. They're just the most fascinating team. Um, but they've got a, they've got Sydney this week on Thursday oh, night, so that's going to be. Yeah. I think if they knock off the Swans, oh shit, then look out. I think <laughs> the dogs are back in town. But yeah, they're they're just such an interesting team. I mean, they've got yeah. A, Everyone knows about their talent. Yes. So they're capable of, of really beating anyone. It's Correct. just whether they put it all together and, and do it is another thing. So, but yeah, I think the Bevo criticism is probably a bit, it's a little bit harsh, but I can mm. see why. I can see why people are coming for him. I just personally thought it was absolutely unbelievable that he would drop Riley Sanders and just relegate yeah. him to VFL because he's cracked the shits from being subbed off. Like the kid's having a decent game. You've said that he's the, he's the most ready first year player to enter into the AFL and he's had someone like Bontempelli in the team and then he's just gone and subbed them out twice in the first yeah. month of football. It's like, what are you teaching the kids? So, um, yeah. you know, Bevo is an ext- a very eccentric character. He is. Um, you know, yeah. no one really knows how he's, what's going on in that mind of He's a little bit like Kevin Sheedy, almost <laughs> like just a bit of a loose unit. Yeah. But um, someone who's also, well, not even someone, but a team that's being a little bit loose at the moment as well with their football, Melbourne. Did mm. they go to West Coast thinking we got this? Yep. Yeah, but they're an interest, another really interesting <laughs> team, aren't they? I think they're probably pretty similar to the Bulldogs, where it's like they their best is so good. Yeah. But then they've got this in them where they just drop these weird games and then they play absolutely terribly. I think mean, I've got a, a lot of Melbourne mates and they're they're very fed up with how they play at times, you know, where they oh, yeah. and yes, they have that premiership from a few years ago, but they want to see one in person, you know, at the MCG. So it's like they ha- and they haven't won a final since that grand final, and they're as frustrated as anyone, and arguably probably have one of the best teams in the competition on their day. They're but they're yeah, if not a top two, top three team. So they're they're fascinating the days, and I love it when they're up and about because they're good to watch. But yeah. when they play like they did on the weekend, they're they're a real tough watch. And even the week before against us, when they were really bad for three quarters, and then turned it on for 10, 15 minutes, yeah. and look what happened. So almost got the dub. Correct. Yeah. So. They're, an, they're another one. I think Melbourne Bulldogs, you probably put them in the same basket where you're like, great teams, great potential, but just don't know how to flip the switch at the right time. I yeah, think. 100%. And, and their forward woes are known for a long time. Yeah. Just who's going to kick this? Who's going to kick a winning score? And it just seems like this year, if you want to win it or you want to go really far, you have to be able to pile on the scoreboard and make and take full advantage of momentum because momentum swings are so wild in this game. And as long as you can keep riding the momentum, the six, 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 you can't put a, you can't put someone behind the ball uh, in order to, to stop that play. All of a sudden, when you've got momentum, they evapor- that lead just completely evaporates. And you, you know, you've seen it uh, yourself. Conversely, if you're on fire and you're on top, it just completely compounds. And then you've also seen that from last week. Like mm. it was a close game initially, and then they just can the yeah. Swans just continue riding that momentum. We were a beneficiary of momentum in the third quarter against the North against North Melbourne, and really only played one good quarter to to run out forty points winners, and then just sort of in the last quarter just put the cue in the rack. But mm. you know, being able to to control momentum a little bit as well as ride it, 
I think the best teams are going to be the ones that can manage that throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you hit the nail on here. I think it's it's so good for the competition that we've got this happening. Not good for when your team's in the lead, <laughs> but it's it's great for the competition and it's good for just a general fan when you're watching a game and you're like, oh, a six goal lead at three quarter time. No, I think that team can reel it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's exciting. It makes it it makes it more fun to watch. And you know, days gone past when you're like a six goal lead going into the last quarter is probably enough, and a team would put the cue in the rack and. Maybe barring a, a team like North Melbourne, no disrespect to North, but yeah, they're probably not going to hunt down that that sort of lead. Um, but it's great when you yeah two teams are playing against each other. And you look at yeah Carlton Melbourne the other week that that's a prime example of it. So mm. it's good for the competition, not good if you're leading, um, but yeah, good for the comp. All disrespect to North, you guys yeah. are shit. You guys <laughs> are terrible. You guys have a big rivalry with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, they they they, they, they want to make a rivalry yeah. out of it. We just we just well, they like need to, someone to have a rival with. We man, just man. like to, we just like to you know. Uh, North it's Melbourne. a friendly rivalry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little brother. Oh, yeah, nice <laughs> of you. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. You can have a rivalry. But um, yeah, no, nah, momentum leads. You would think surely an 11-point lead with 33 seconds on the clock would be yeah. enough. Surely. 11 points, 33 seconds. How could it possibly go wrong? Mm. How could it possibly go wrong, Sam Mitchell? Couldn't have happened to a better bloke. Stuff you said, bitch, with your with your jabbing oh. thing. Yeah, you can get stuffed, Sam. I'm so happy. Um, it could not have happened to a better bloke, honestly. And then you look at, and I hate Sam Mitchell. Absolutely hate. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying no, Sam Mitchell, it. you are a flog. All right. Now you look at someone like Trent Cotchin. Trent Cotchin comes out the other week and he says, when he was called the Brownlow medalist, and he said, oh, no, no, it's a token Brownlow medalist. I don't believe I've won that medal. You ask Sam Mitchell that question. The guy's like, oh, yeah, Joe Botson's a cheat. Joe Botson and that. The best employers deserve to get what they've got. Piss off, Sam Mitchell. That's poor form. You're an absolute flog and you deserve to lose every single game for the rest of the year. Uh, Thank you for attending my TED Talk. I love it. I love it. I was, just, I was, funny, I was about to say I really felt sorry for, for Sam Mitchell and the Hawks you can get after stuffed. watching that. You can get stuff. We've got the complete opposite opinion of it. Um, but I understand your, your history with, with Sam Mitchell and – and the Hawks as well, obviously another another big rival of the Bombers. But um, I mean, yeah, like Hawthorne did, they did nothing wrong that game. They were so good until the end, and you can't be blowing an eleven point lead with thirty seconds left. Like that is that is a very harsh way to lose. And it would have been great for for us to see Port That's drop true. drop points as well. That's so, true. Um, but yeah, I mean Hawthorne won. They've they've really turned the corner after you know a few weeks ago where they just couldn't get near any team. They were on that the same page as a Richmond and a North Melbourne. So they've really come up. Them and West Coast have really been the big improvers over the last few weeks. Oh, it's been a, they've been a bit of a surprise package for sure, yeah. um, 100%. But like you say they haven't, they didn't do much wrong. That entire last quarter was as wrong as it possibly oh, could yeah. be. Oh, yeah. That's what like, I mean. Like that yeah. last quarter was, they, was they absolutely, half an hour of just yeah. stupidity. They shit the bed in the last quarter. Oh. But that was so good in the first three. Yeah, you know, like yeah. They were going to pull off a great win here. and yeah. Which is why it's ridiculous. They were so they dominant. Sh- they shouldn't have lost that. No, no, way. no. They were so dominant for those first three quarters. Why would you go away from what was working so well? Like the poor Adelaide power, bro, it was like as if there was no power. Mm. There was a complete power outage. They couldn't get anything going. There was no spark. It was just all Hawthorne. Yeah. They managed only like 10 scoring shots mm. up until three quarter time. Yeah. It was such a comprehensive destruction. And then for them to go away so completely from that yeah. to try and defend a lead, there's no such thing as defending a league in the modern in the, no, in the modern not, game. Exactly. As, yeah. as you were saying before, it's yeah. all about go, go, go. Yeah. Keep going, keep capitalizing. And in the end, the Hawks should have lost by more if it wasn't for poor Adelaide's inaccuracy in yeah. the last quarter. Yeah. yeah. So that would have been a, a horrific turnaround from being 41 points up to losing, I think, rather than being two goals, uh, eight, I think, the expected score had them being seven goals, three. Okay. In that last quarter. Yeah. They would have... Yeah, they would have run away with it. Oh, yeah. it would have run away by so, by so much. That would have been over a 60-point turnaround. Mm. So, um, <laughs> cop that. Cop yeah. that. Sam Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, it's, it's probably just a young team, isn't it? Like not knowing how to manage a lead in a game like that against a good team. So, I think if it was, an, if it was a, a more experienced, classier outfit, they probably would have hung on. But, yeah, a bit of learning for the Hawks, I think. they got to learn a bit from, from Collingwood because... Uh, well, they're the oh. kings of it, aren't they? It, it pains me. It hurts to say. Yeah. Bloody Collingwood freaking. I don't want to say what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> they managed to escape another one on the weekend. Yeah. Escape from the Crows. Yeah. 
Isaac Rankin. He went from hero to zero, mm. being pinged for running twenty four meters. That's a lot. Yeah, of, that's a lot to that run. Is a lot. I it, didn't feel. It didn't feel nah, like it. No, nah. watching it live did not feel like it until they did the the review about it. Um, God, he's a good player though, Rankin. I thought he was going to really rip their hearts open. He was he was on fire. Um, but it's just it just feels like Collingwood always get lucky with these things, don't Every they? Every time they do. It's just I don't get it. It it. it oh. Is Eddie Maguire still somehow feeding money yeah. to, to, to people? Like, who wants to be a millionaire? He just starts just shoveling money out to people. <laughs> because Collingwood just continue to... They are actually the luckiest team in the AFL. They are. I don't even care. They were in shambles with their list management. Absolute shambles. The salary cap issues. Just the fire sale of all these players. And, of course, in comes Peter Dacos' sperm and resurrects this team. Mm. Yeah. And they go from... Second last to essentially second in one year, and then onto a, a premiership. So it's crazy. It is crazy. And then they they won all their games in 2022 and 2023 by the same way that they did on the weekend. Yep. And it's like obviously they're a good team because they you know, you've won a premiership and you make a prelim. You're obviously a good team. It's like how good are they? Because you're just getting over the line in 95 percent of your games. Correct. So it's like. Uh, your luck, your luck has to change, doesn't it? Like, Surely it has to. At, like at some stage, like someone just get on the other side of them. Like it's 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 really obviously we we have a, a very similar feeling about Collingwood, so you can tell. But it would just be nice if they experience what we experience, in losing those those painful ones. Because I feel like Collingwood always beat us painfully. When we beat them, it's a bit more comfortably. So yeah. oh, they yeah, I could talk about it all day. My my frustration with that. Our draw looks really good now all of a sudden with them because they were starting to get the ball rolling, their momentum flowing again uh, when they came up against us. It's looking really good now, mm. actually, in terms of the form, who they're, who they're beating, yeah. who they're playing against. Uh, and some of these results, like, you know, we mentioned that the, the Giants result maybe not might not look as good as it did otherwise, but... That West Coast win by six points over yep. there is now looking really good, yep. which is surprising. Like, you wouldn't think beating West Coast over there uh, at the start of the season was going to be such a monumentous feat. But you just now you go, oh, Simon Goodwin, what do you reckon? You'd be like, yeah, yeah I'm, correct. I'm glad yeah, like, yeah. it's like a six-point win over, over West Coast now. Correct, absolutely. I mean, would you, apart from the Giants game, would you say that's probably your best win in this stretch of games? Probably is, isn't it? Yeah, like it, it was a real banana slip, a, a banana peel game because you could yeah. easily slip over Yeah. that – they were up and about. They got Harley Reid back after he was rested. Yeah. Obviously, during that game, Elliot Yo went down, which was probably a bit, you know, yeah. more beneficiary of that. Waterman, I think, also got injured late in that mm. game. Oh, Waterman. He's old, mate. He needs some credit, doesn't he? Holy Put some shit. respect on this guy's name. Where did he come from? Yeah. <laughs> Where did this come from? Equal Shake top Waterman. of the Coleman. Crazy. Whilst well, playing less games. Yeah. He's yeah. just like unstoppable. Yeah. What's the thing? He's plug or something. He's, he's playing like he, him. He is, absolutely. He's got. Some of the best hands in the competition as well. Unreal. Doesn't drop anything. And he's deadly accurate. Yeah. Never misses. So it's great. It's great to see. Like I love it. I love that West Coast has all of a sudden just popped up out of nowhere. Everyone expected them just to be like be like North. Yeah. Really. So they've um they're gonna be a hard team to beat for most of the year. They're probably not gonna obviously challenge no. for the finals, but they're gonna be hard, bloody hard to beat. It's not an easy game like it used to be. Or yeah, definitely last year, that's for sure. Oh man, it's because he's popping off. Uh, Elliot Yo's popping off yep. now when he's fully fit. He's you can see how much the the the, the, cross, the Eagles missed him, and also one Harley Reid. Now I I don't know if you guys have heard of this guy before. He seems to be okay at football, and he seems to be the mayor of Perth at this point almost. Mm -hmm. Like he he essentially owns the back of every single Western Australian newspaper, um, and rightfully so by the looks of things. He, uh, his performance on the weekend was just absolutely unreal. Mm. Of course, I traded him out of my super coach team that week, uh, that week. So he just decides to say, uh, it's tough for you, Joe. Uh, I'm about to go bonkers. And, uh, he shot all over Petrarca and Oliver. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? It's, it's so, it's so good to watch. He's making West Coast watchable, isn't yeah. he? They're, like, they're, they're a must watch team at the moment. And it's great. I love it. And I think as we're going to see the years at that, that now, over the, oh, over, definitely over the next few years, we're going to see these players come in and just have an instant impact. Like they're just mm. built professionally, they're mature bodies. Like you see Nick Dacos 
Harley Reid over the last few years, Sam Walsh, yep. Matt Real. Like they just come in and straight away they're dominating. So it's great. It's great. It just shows the importance of, of those high picks. And I think Harley just the the – I understand the fanfare of it now after seeing his probably his last two, three games. Early in the season, it was like, oh, yeah, okay, everyone's obsessed with Harley Reid. He's this <laughs> guy that fends off everyone. He's yep. probably not going to have much of an impact, which he didn't in the first couple of games. But, geez, recently he's been scary. That goal was unbelievable. That yeah. has just made the rounds. Is that goal of the year? It could be. It could be. Yeah. The solo effort, yeah, essentially, from the middle, gathers from the clearance, hard ball get. Bounces three times, running away from Christian Petrarca, if you don't mind. It's not just, it's not some yeah. uh, Cal Dawson or something like He's <laughs> running away from Christian Petrarca. Yeah. And he's made him look slow. Petrarca could not close the gap until the very end when he was about to mm. steady himself up for the goal. That's unreal. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. And then he also did the double fend off. Mm. I thought, oh no. Zach Merritt is going to be a poster boy forever yeah. now with the fend off, but thankfully now he's got a more high profile version oh, now. He's going to have one a, for a Oliver, few posters, isn't one it? for Petrarca. <laughs> uh, he's, if he's not doing a double fend off, he's taking a screamer. Yeah. He's not taking a screamer. He's kicking a goal. Yeah. He's just doing it all. He's, he's got it all. And it's, it's scary to think what he's going to be like when he's 23, 24, 25. Like, how crazy is this guy going to be in a few years' time if he's doing all this stuff already? So it's, it's great for the game. I love it. And it's great for West Coast. Because everyone's like, oh, Harley, he's going to hate it up there. He's not going to do well. He's just want to come home. But yep. I can see him being there the whole his whole, whole career at the moment. He, he seems like he's really, really loving life. Man, BHP going to be throwing so much money his way over mm. there. Uh, sponsor, sponsor. Oh, yeah, there absolutely. Of, uh, He'd be well looked after. The West Coast Eagles. Yeah, I wouldn't yep. be surprised if he's got some sort of, um, you know, his, uh, what's his face? The coach. Adam Simpson's got three Hungry Jacks, um, three Hungry Jacks restaurants. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a few coming to uh, Harley, uh, Harley <laughs> Reid's way as well. Please stay. Oh, there's Please gotta stay. be there's gotta be a way. They're the, they're the wealthiest club in the competition. There's gotta be these these backdoor ways that these players are getting looked after. So and they manage to keep a lot of their historically, they keep all their players too. Correct. Yeah. So it, players don't leave there when they're when they're when they're over there. So no, nah, it's good. It's good for the competition. I'm glad West Coast are, are not as bad as they were last year, that's for sure. And North Melbourne are sticking needles in their eyes yeah, every time well, they see him play. Is that and, could that possibly be the worst win of all time? That game last year against Gold Coast, where they've come off a twenty-game losing streak, and then they decide to win when they have Harley Reid on the line. That would hurt. That would hurt as a North fan. That would. That would. It hurts to talk about. I don't even go for North, but I think they're going to be regretting that for a very long time. I find that hilarious. They can't even lose, right? Yeah. I, 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 even when they win, North Melbourne lose. Even with the wins, I love it. It's, they're so it's... desperate for a win, but then when they couldn't buy a win last year. They decide to win. Oh, it's just, it's comical. It really is comical. You could probably write a movie about it, couldn't you? <laughs> All yeah. of the mistakes. A series of unfortunate events. That yeah. is North Melbourne yeah. football club. Um, but yeah, no, Harvey Reid's on fire. I mean, I know there's a lot of people trying to compare him to Nick Dacos. Uh, in terms of first year uh, impact, I'd say Harley Reid's having more of an impact for his team than Nick Dacos did for Collingwood. Now, does that mean that he's going to be a better player for the duration of his career than Nick Dacos. I think only time will tell. Nick Dacos is, a, is an incredible talent. There's no doubt about it. His IQ off the charts, his work rate, he always works his butt off. I know Dacos cops a lot of hatred um, from toxic footy fans who says he can't win a hard ball, for example. But I think he's really shown that he's capable of doing a lot more uh, from that side. But when you look at just immediate impact coming in, mm. not playing behind the ball, like Dacos was introduced into the game coming off half back. This guy has been thrown into the middle, going head to head with the Olivers and yeah. the Petrarcas and the Vineys and making them look silly. Yeah. It's hard. Maybe it's just recency bias, but in terms of just pure impact, he has expedited the West Coast Eagles rebuild by two years at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think the impact that he's having on West Coast and to single handedly make them relevant again. I think that overtakes what Nick Dacos did in his first year. Yeah. I mean, Nick Dacos had quality players around him, and that's not that's not taking anything away from Dacos's first year. Oh, he absolutely. was he was exceptional and then backed it up in his second year and was arguably a lot better. But I think the the impact that Harley Reid is producing on that team and the things that he's doing that he should not be doing as an eighteen year old in terms of his strength and his confidence um, to fend off players and take hangers and kick these goals. 
Um, yeah, I, I think Harley Reid for mine. It, it probably is recency bias, but I think for now, I think it, I think it's him. And maybe we judge it after well, after his first season or after his second yeah. season, and, and we'll go from there. But I love that these two players are going to have, have pretty much started at the same time. Yeah, and we're going to have the next 10, 15 years to watch them go head to head as probably the two best players in the competition for yeah. for a long time. So it's very good. Love it. Come to the Bombers, Harley. Please come to the Bombers, Harley. We'll, we'll pay you everything. Well, you played in your VFL team, didn't you? You played in our VFL yeah. team. So well, there is a photo of Harley yeah. Reid in red and black. Yeah. Bro, you look good. <laughs> you know you look good in red and black. Everyone looks good in Jeez, red and you black. You need to clear some serious salary cap space to, to get him over, wouldn't you? Mate, we're paying, we're paying Ben Mackay north of a million dollars this is year. That is true, yeah. So uh, we love to pay up. We that love to true. pay up. Except for when it involves the mother flipping tribunal. How could we let Harry Jones cop that one week's expansion? I don't care if you were reluctant. I don't care if you begrudgingly accepted it. That is pathetic, Bombers. What are you doing? That was not a dangerous tackle. Someone needs to suspend that umpire. How old's holding the ball every day of the week? Yeah, 100%. And I think... I think it might have been AFL Central that posted something on Instagram before and he did a vote saying, was this dangerous or was this not? And Zach Fisher clicked on it saying, no, it wasn't, nothing in it. So the player that's getting tackled is saying there's nothing in it, then, yep. then you really have, we really have to – I see what the AFL is trying to do and, and I commend them for it, but I think we're probably going a bit too far with some of these and it's like, come on. Like just We've got to be a bit sensible with, with the action and – and what we're suspending and what we're not. So that that one for mine, I think that definitely got wrong. But do you think if it wasn't Harry Jones, if it was someone like a Zach Merritt or Jake Stringer, do you do you challenge that? That's without, a good question. Without disrespecting Harry Jones. That's a Jones. very good question. Yeah. And I would say yes. Yeah, if it was Zach Merritt. 100%. I would say 100%. Yeah. If it was Zach Merritt, it would, we would absolutely appeal that. But then that would, that would just lie in the face of what they've said. Which is yeah. we've spoken to the legals and the biomechanist and you know they've fucking even got the biomechanist involved. <laughs> like, how aren't you paying them? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just freaking appeal, guys. Do it for the do yeah. it for the culture. Do it no. for the state of the game at least. Yep. Don't pay a don't don't pay a stupid biomechanist, man. Yeah. Like, I can tell you that that was not dangerous, and I didn't have to study a lick. In order to get that. Same thing with Zach Fisher. Man, yeah. Zach Fisher calls a Parmigiana a Parmo. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah, I think it was on, I've it was on the North Melbourne yeah. socials. Even the Parmo guy reckons it wasn't a, <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't a dangerous one. So like, geez, the AFL and Essendon, pull your head together mm. and like, come on, get with the times. I get it. You got lawsuits coming, but Zach Fisher was not gonna sue you for that tackle. Is uh so yeah, that nah, it's yeah. It's been a while since we've seen a dangerous tackle. At least, apl- at least apply the bloody good bloke argument. Yeah, I mean, if Charlie Cameron did that, he'd get off, wouldn't he? Charlie, he's a, he's a great bloke. Oh, Charlie Cameron fully <laughs> dumped him yeah. into the ground. He's a good bloke, and he got off. Clearly, Essendon doesn't think Harry Jones is a good bloke. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the AFL have set a dangerous precedent with that they good do. Blo- that good bloke thing. So I think a lot of teams and uh, and clubs club officials are going to abuse that. I think maybe Brad Scott having come from AFL head house as is like in, in a policy way saying I'm not going to abuse that because I've yeah, come from the AFL yeah. and I still want to keep myself in their good books. I don't know why. Maybe so the umpires can continue looking after us, but they didn't look after us on the weekend. That was holding the ball. Stuff you, mate. I hate it. I hate it. We had a good run with umpires, but it looks like it's finally over. Yeah. I mean, you're playing north, so come on. It's true. You, you were going to win enough. it regardless. So that's true. Yeah. That's if, it happened, true. if it happened in a in a bigger game, then you'd probably be more spewing. Absolutely ropeable. But I think you can probably cop it in the North game. And we when we got uh, Richmond this week. Oh, Dreamtime at that, the that's G. Fine. You ha- you, you, that's probably why they didn't appeal it. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's oh, so that we don't have to physically drop yeah. Harry Jones, <laughs> yeah. and then we can bring Nate Caddy in. Come on, Nate Caddy, get uh, involved. Get on, get on board. Yeah, when is he debuting? There's a lot of talk about him. He's obviously oh. he looked really good in his draft. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon this is the way we get him in. Yeah, against against a poor Richmond team. I reckon this is how we get him in. Yeah. Come on in, son. You got Gresham playing his first dream time. Got Goldie. Mm. Oh, and the crazy thing is, if we beat Richmond this week, Ben Mackay would have officially doubled his entire winning record. 
he's had seven, I think he's only had eight wins for his entire career. And then if he wins this week against Richmond, he'd have 16 wins. Oh, that is so... In seven years yeah. of football, he would have finally had that many in the first 10 weeks as opposed to seven years at North Melbourne. You reckon he regrets his decision? <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> so sad, but so good for him, I guess. It but is. It's it is. just sad that he had to endure that sort of career for seven years. So, um, And just quietly, I think he's, he's been a great He has been a great, great pickup. Pick he's Agreed. been very good. I was a bit... I was a bit on the fence about, oh, geez, you're, obviously, you're overpaying him a bit. He's probably not as good as what people are making out he is. He was, I mean, probably because he was playing for North and in a really bad team. Yep. So a bit more support around him. He's obviously really good and, and holding up the post well. And let's hope he, he plays in round, when, round 13. King's I was going to say. Birthday Eve and I, they can finally play on each other. I was going to so, ask, who's going to do a hammy first or get yeah, suspended? Who's going to do it? Someone's going to be out. Yeah. Someone's going to be sick. <laughs> Someone's going to have a personal reason. Someone's <laughs> Because how could it possibly be? It's crazy. They've been in the system for what nine years now? Yeah, so oh maybe eight eight years. Eight yeah. years. Yeah, they got drafted in twenty end of twenty fifteen, and yeah. still have never played against each other. If it wasn't for their podcast, hmm. I would have thought for sure they're the same person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is absolutely wild. It's wild, but I think it's going to happen this year. I think it's going to happen. I think they've both been. I mean. They've both been good this Touch year. Wood, Touch but wood, but yeah, they've both been really fit and um, and what an occasion to do it. Like an, an Essendon Carlton game, King's Birthday Eve. Yeah, both teams hopefully in in really good form by then. Yeah, there's no better stage for them to they play their first game against each other. And can you imagine the roar if oh. Ben takes a mark on Harry and then or Harry kicks a goal on Ben? It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty crazy. It'd be seen double. Yeah, but. Obviously, different color, yeah. uh, different color jerseys. But that, have yeah. we ever seen twins play on each other? Oh, At least surely, in recent memory, surely it's happened before, but not that I can think of off the top of my head. I don't know twins have played in the same team. But yeah, yeah, but against each other, against side each by other. side. Yeah, it's going to be wild. That would be wild. Yeah, that would be yeah, that would be unreal. And there'd be so many people. It'd be it would be close to ninety thousand. Oh, it will so. be. I think if we both come in with a, well, we need to start. Holding up air into the bargain, I think, in terms of wins. Like you guys are, I think you guys are probably going to be. You, know, you got Richmond, and then who have you got after Richmond? And we travel north to play against Gold Coast up there. That, so that will be a so tough that's one. Gonna be, if you get through that and win that, oh boy, I reckon it's going to be, it'll be a 90,000 crowd at the G. Because Gold Coast really making a fortress up north. They, yeah. I don't think they've dropped a game yet at home. Yeah. And yeah, if we can go up there with the humidity on their desk, on their deck and get the and get the win, then that would just really confirm that this is a new Essen and it's not the Essen involved. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, if you do that, if you knock them off up there, I think they everyone can. If they're not taking you seriously already, I think it, that'll be the one. And then obviously, if, and if you knock us off, then it's like okay, lid lids are absolutely gone at Bomberland. If if you can uh, get through these next few weeks, so um, it's it's good for the competition. For I sure. don't I don't love seeing it, but. <laughs> I'm happy for Essendon to be good if we're good as well. Oh, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's all I'll say. Oh, yeah. uh, the, there is no doubt that the AFL is at its absolute best when the big Victorian clubs yeah. are up and about. You just feel the buzz in the city. It just brings life to everything. Everyone's look, looking forward to the games. Mm. And then if we play in finals, like, it's going to be unreal. I mean, yeah. We're drawing crowds to Marvel Stadium with 43,000 people against North Melbourne. Mm. Who are languishing last, yeah. like at one o'clock on a Sunday. As one well. o'clock on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that might be the largest crowd at Marvel, apart from Good Friday. Yeah. You guys pulled, I think, 45, I think 46? 48. 48. Around 48, 49. There you go. Yeah. So that, that was huge yeah. as well. But then again, everything is closed and there's absolutely nothing it's to do. It's public holiday. There's literally yeah. nothing to and do it on the Friday. Count, does it? Yeah. But, you know, like, yeah. we can draw massive crowds. And mm. if we're up and about, then oh my god, that is yep. just that that is peak AFL right there. Actually, didn't you guys um, draw fifty thousand against the Bulldogs on the Friday night a few weeks ago? We did. So that's the biggest one. So you biggest really are well. just yeah. You, People are feeling it. Yeah, they are. People it's are similar to what we what we experienced last year when mm. we finally were rising from um, from the shit. Really, so you you it, it's showing it's showing the big clubs, the sleeping giants of Essendon and Carlton when they're up and about the fans. There's no bigger. There's no bigger club in my opinion Collingwood obviously massive they're but, huge. but West they're, Coast all, but they're well. all, Collingwood are always big they've always been Correct. good they've always been good where Essendon and Carlton have been 
been no good for a long time. And now the fans are just wound up. They, they want some success. So it's 100%. great to see. And people out there, if you're watching and you're saying, where's Richmond? You ask yourselves, where's Richmond? Yes, all right, you had your 100,000 fans in your peak years. Yeah. But like. No, Richmond don't count. Where are you guys now? Yeah. Like, where are your fans now? Where, you, know, you got Swizz here last week saying, oh, thank God we're not playing finals this year. Like, come on. Like, mm. it's. Uh, you gotta if you if you're gonna be truly recognised as one of the big big clubs in this competition, you're gonna have to have the consistent appearances, coming to games as a as a fan base, whether you're doing well or you're doing poorly. We've been doing poorly for many many years, and yet the fans continue to front up time and time again. Yep. I like honestly, our fans, even St Kilda's fans. You know, obviously they're not quite as many as us because they're, they're not a big yeah. Victorian club. But we've gone through so many false dawns and yet our supporters, you know, like massive respect to the both of us, I mm, reckon. 100%. Yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest badge of honour you can have as a club is your fans are going to show up no matter what. And you know, games against you know, games against the struggling North or a Gold Coast or a Giants, I and mean, we had over 40,000 against the Giants at yeah, Marvel a few unreal, weeks ago. Yeah. So, like, it shows. And we've broken our membership record eight years in a row. and. We won two games in 2018 yeah. and still got 60-something thousand members a year after and broke a record. So like that it shows. And then Richmond are bloody closing level four at the MCG for some of their games. Like yep. It's embarrassing that it comes to that and it shows the big bandwagon reputation that they have is very true. And there's pet memberships. The pet memberships. The pet yeah. memberships. Don't think we've forgotten about your pet <laughs> memberships, Richmond. Fake, fake big team. Uh, fake big team. All right. I think we'll take a break right now, guys, yep. and we'll join you on the other side. And we're back, fancasters, from our break. Now going to go over our tips for the coming week. Just off the bat, I think we had a pretty decent week last week. We got seven out of nine. So if you did if you did better than that, I can't believe that you tipped either the Bulldogs or the Eagles. If you did any of that, then you're either a diehard Bulldog or West Coast Eagles fan mm -hmm. or you got lucky. I refuse to believe that you foresaw that was going to happen. So we move on. To, how, how were your tips last week? Do you, do you do tips? I reckon I got about seven as well. Yeah, yeah, it was those two. I think everyone probably got those two wrong. Or I, I feel like the people that get are good at tips don't know anything about footy sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's the best way to do it. There you go. Yeah. Don't know what you're talking yeah. about. All right. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to come into round 11, the last week before the buy rounds come in. So we've got starting off, you did allude to this game a bit earlier on in the potty. We've got the dogs hosting the swans. At Marvel Stadium, there are some people out there who actually believe that the Bulldogs really are a sneaky chance of causing an upset here. Are you one of those people? I'd love to think so, but after seeing Sydney firsthand last week, they're gonna. It's gonna be very hard to beat them, and yeah. the Dogs coming off a I think a five day break in a, in the wet against the yeah. Giants, it's gonna be very hard for them. I think to 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 beat Sydney, the the best team in the competition, so. I think, yeah, I think Sydney should, should win that. I agree. And also a question of if Tom McCartan comes back, it just makes him even better. Yeah. Um, which obviously kind of scary to think about. Obviously, they're going to be without Luke Parker, who's going yeah. to cop some suspension, but they didn't even need him because they've been flying without him. Yeah. So I think we're both on the Sydney Swans bandwagon over there. We then move to a Friday night game. Frio's playing a Friday night game at Optus Stadium hosting the Dirty Pies. Please, Fremantle. Please, Fremantle. I beseech thee. I'm actually going to tip you guys. That's how much I want you to win. Please, I'm yep. going to tip the Freo. I'm going Freo as well. Freo at home. I think, yeah, I think they're in, in some good form and I think they'll beat the Pies and, and put, them, put them just back down a little bit. Back in your boxes. Yeah. Back in your boxes, you dirty Pies. <laughs> now, also, there's, there's, there are injuries at, at Collingwood. Yep. You know, um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just... I'm just pure hatred here, right? I, 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 there is a bit of football analysis here. They've got a few injuries. They're ble they're bleeding a few debutants, and yeah. obviously, whenever you play a WA team over there, it's an entirely different proposition compared to if you're playing them over here. So they're also in great form. 
They came over here at Marvel Stadium. They disposed of the, of the Saints pretty comfortably. And I honestly think that the way they're going to play this game, they're going to try and suffocate Collingwood into a low-scoring affair. Yeah. I think. Correct. Yeah. It's not the best way to play footy. It's not the most entertaining, but it gets the job done for them most times. And yep. I think they will. I think they'll beat the Pies over there. Come on, Brio. Evo. We then go to Saturday night. Saturday day. So not Saturday night. Saturday. Saturday day. <laughs> the <laughs> truck's saying that bust. A lot of times when you have a couple of beers. Uh, <laughs> North Melbourne are hosting Port Adelaide at Blundstone Arena Hobart. 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 Mm. Makes things an interesting proposition. Not quite. Mm. Does it? Does it? <laughs> Sorry, North. You guys suck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, stranger things have happened at down in Tassie, so but uh, you'd be a brave person to tip North in this one. We played one quarter last week. Yeah. And one by 40. Yeah. Just, just one. What's yeah. Port going to do? I think if North are ever going to win a game this year, it's probably going to be down there, but it's not going to be against Port, I don't think. Watch this kick. Watch, yeah. watch, this, watch this clip come back and bite us both in the ass. I know Jez. Jez will be really happy as a North man. Sorry, Jez. Just uh, not just quite yet. Then move to your boys on also Saturday afternoon, 1.45 p.m. at Marvel Stadium. The Blues are hosting the Gold Coast Suns. You're obviously going to back your boys. Yes, I, I think so. I think it's a game that we... One, have to win, and two, we should be winning regardless of the form that Gold Coast are in at the moment. And mm. we've got some players back and and big one with Adam Saad coming back and Lockie Bogarty as well are two massive inclusions for us and been sorely missed the last few weeks. So, um, yeah, I think we, we just have to win this game essentially. We've, we've dropped too many of late, so I think, we, I think we'll get the job done here. This is going to be a comfortable win for you. Yeah. This is going to be, a, I reckon, easily five-goal win, I think. For, this, for, for your boys. The Suns have shown that they're really great at home and playing up north, but I don't think they've been able to win very much away from having the advantage when it comes to the, the conditions. So they're playing now under the roof at Marvel Stadium. It's going to be impeccable. Your boys, your fans are going to come in. They're going to know that this is a very much a winnable game and they're going to come in and the, the Carlton faithful are going to absolutely uh, drive this massive momentum and the, the, the sound of the woof is going to be woof. reverberating through Marvel Stadium. It's going to be a very comfortable win for the Carlton Footy Club. Oh, mate. GMHBA. Yeah, this, is, this is the game. We've been talking about this. This is the game. GMHBA Stadium. Geelong, third on the ladder still, despite yeah. being really bad the last few weeks. They're still third on the ladder. So we have to put a little bit of respect on that name. Hosting the Giants, who are sixth. Despite, again, having mm. a bad patch, they're still sick on the ladder. I am actually going to go with Gooas. I'm going to go with the Giants. Oh, I'm, it's, praying it's a on a, I'm, I'm praying on a Geelong downfall. Yep. But the, the Giants have been a really good match for the Cats over there. There's only two teams, I think, from, from my top of my head, not doing any real research into this. There's just two teams I feel that consistently beat Geelong in Geelong, and those are the Giants and the Fremantle Dockers. Mm. Just yeah. these two teams, I think, are, are the only two teams that just go over, beat Geelong there, and that's their quota of losses at that stadium for the entire <laughs> season. That's it. They drop those two games and, the, and, so random, and, and they like win it. everything <laughs> else. So I'm actually going to go with the Giants here. I'm going to go the Cats. Nice. I'm just not brave enough to go the Giants. I mean, they're both, they both have to win. They're both off big losing streaks, but I think. Cats with Hawkins, Cameron back. I think that's going to make a big difference for him. So, Geelong for me. Yeah, if those are, if those are, if they're back in, those are two massive ins because yeah. they really don't didn't have much of a forward line really without no. those two guys. No, Ollie Henry's not quite ready to really be a number one. And he's just not not big enough to be no. that main guy down there. Shannon yeah. Neal is still too young to be yeah. in the be so. Yeah, if those two boys are in, then yeah, hundred percent. That would be. More likely Geelong, but at this point in time, I'm gonna I'm gonna back in King Kingsley. Kingsley was actually sitting on the on the roof watching training today. On the roof, right. it was on the roof. I I, I follow the Giants social media, yeah. Well, and there was a picture uh, of Kingsley literally on the roof watching training. And it was like, why up there? He says it gives me a better view. They leave me alone. 
<laughs> That's crazy. We'll I'll leave you alone, Kingsley. It. Whatever so works, good. works. Yeah. Come on, King. Come on, trying, they've, got to, they've got to try something different, don't they? 100%. Out, yeah. outside, outside of the box. Yeah. Literally outside of the coach's <laughs> box. Uh, we then get to dream time at the G Saturday night. The Richmond Tigers languishing in 17th on the ladder are uh, hosting the Bombers who are unbelievably second on the ladder. Getting a bit of altitude sickness here. Not used to this type of behavior. Uh, we're at dollar seven, and I think for good reason. Yeah. Um, it's hard to hard to hard to tip Richmond. Yeah. They're, Richmond are uncompetitive at the moment. They're yeah, they're as bad as I've ever seen Richmond yep. to be honest. So I feel for them. They do have a lot. You know, the biggest injury list in the competition. I think they've only got thirty under thirty players that yeah. they can even pick for this week. So yeah, um, things are pretty dire for them, but. It is a dream time game. It's a big occasion, so maybe they they show a bit more fight. But I think the form that Essen's been in, you silly man to hit the tigers. Maybe they dared to dream yeah. at dream time, <laughs> and they create a miracle somehow, uh, a bit like ours last year. We then move to Sunday afternoon. The Hawks coming off their traumatizing loss, <laughs> hosting the Lions at Marvel Stadium. Mm. Now the Lions don't mind Marvel. Yeah, I. Assume that this was just in Tassie. No, I mean, usually they play Brisbane in, down in Tassie, and Correct. I probably would have tipped Hawthorne if it was down in Tassie. But it's a tough. It's actually a really hard game to to pick. It's probably it a pretty evenly evenly matched. But you'd, you'd probably have to tip it over to Brisbane. Just I think. Yeah, yeah, I think Brisbane. Just I think they're they're slowly, even though they played Richmond last week, they're slowly starting to find some of their form. So, and they can't afford to really drop too many games no. for the rest of the year. So. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how how the Hawks front up yeah. after what happened Honestly. last week. They are a young team. Are they going to come in a bit shell shocked? Are they going to come in a bit timid and nervous, knowing what sort of great opportunity they let slip last week, or are they going to come out saying, "Stuff this. We deserve to win last week, and we belong, and we're going to show we're going to show Brisbane." But I'm not entirely sure what version of Hawthorne we're going to get. So I have more more trust and faith in the Brisbane Lions yeah. um, as, as a collective. So I will lean to the Lions as well. We then move to the next game, which is Melbourne. They're still called Nam. Hosting Euro, Euro Ryoki. Guess who that is? <laughs> St. Kilda. <laughs> it's, uh, so we've got, so we got the Melbourne Demons hosting St. Kilda at the MCG. Gee, the way the Saints are playing, it's really hard to pick them as well. Yeah, especially the MCG. That ain't go there. It's almost an interstate game for them, isn't it? <laughs> um, and you think the D's are going to, after losing their last two, oh, yeah. they're going to yeah, they're gonna be fired up and oh, you, you, yeah. you tip Melbourne, at, especially at the G. No lever for that's, gonna, that's a big one. That's that a is, big one. That's a big one, yeah. Could King, because King has been playing anything yeah. but a king. He's, he's, he's been dreadful. He's been dreadful. He's been the jester this year. I, yeah. I don't got to say. He's not, he's, not, he's not been living up to his name. So if there was ever a week to really turn it around, it's when St. Kilda appeared to be rock bottom mm. and no lever in the team. That just to spice things up. Whoever's writing this script, pretty, let, let them cook. Whoever's writing this script, let them cook. But I'm not, gonna, I'm not brave enough to go away from Melbourne at this nah, point. Nah, can you imagine if Melbourne lost this? Oh, my they, God. Then that's going to be a tough tough week for him. Oh, do. boy. So I can't see it happening. I almost wanted to see it yeah. happen now. Almost, <laughs> now that you said it, I almost wanted to see it happen. <laughs> we get to the last game of the round. The two birds of prey. No, nah, they're not. Crows aren't birds of prey. <laughs> we got the Crom. They were preyed upon last week. Isaac Rankin, unfortunately. Hosting the Eagles at Adelaide Oval. Now, just by virtue of the fact that it's at Adelaide Oval, you, you automatically, I feel like, give Adelaide a much bigger chance compared to if it was at Optus Oval. 100%. Yeah, I think Adelaide are a much different team at home and West Coast are a much different team away from home. Yes. So you'd think Adelaide should win this and they've got so much still to play for. Yeah. Um, again, they're like Brisbane. They just can't afford to keep losing any more games. Um, so I think Adelaide, I think that, yeah, simply just have to and I think they will. And also, like, we, we speak so highly about Harley Reid and everyone in the media speaking something like that, but at the end of the day, he's still just turned 19. Yeah. He's still a kid. You know what I mean? Like, surely the way he performed last week, 
will mean that he's overconfident, a bit cocky, and and you know the feral Adelaide crowd will get into him. And you know he he, he was in front of his adoring fans last week. Mm. Now it's an entirely different proposition playing yeah. away. So yeah, I'm also going to lean with the Adelaide Crows there. Yeah. So to sum it up, I think we've we've agreed on all of them, bar. Geelong v Giants. Game? Yeah, I yeah think. that's probably the toughest game that's of the, the round, isn't one. it? Yeah, so pretty pretty easy round of tipping, you'd, you'd yeah, think, you'd so think so far. Um, but it never is. <laughs> it really is. So, um, yeah, great round of footy. Great round of footy. And, of course, this would be massive for your boys. I think, I think if, if everything plays out as anticipated, uh, if the Swans win... Oh, if Frio win, that probably puts them still ahead of you, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a possibility that you could be back in the eight with a strong win over the Suns because the Suns yeah. are also in eighth place. So Yeah. Um, we lost a lot of percentage last week, so we're going to have to pour some of that back. But not too concerned about the ladder just yet. Yep. I think it's still a little bit too early to Correct. be too concerned. And then, yeah, from 10th to 3rd, it's all separated by percentage. So... Not too concerned about that, but yes, we do need to get some percentage back after last week. Ah, oh, percentage is overrated, mate. We've only just finally cracked well, over a hundred percent ourselves. <laughs> so uh, who needs percentage? It's all about the wins, mate. Oh man, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on, my yeah. friend. Um, please tell all of our wonderful viewers where they can find you. Yeah, so Old Dark Blues mainly on Instagram. We've got a YouTube as well. Do the podcast on there. Um, but yeah, mainly all the all the activities on Instagram. Um, just release these jumpers as well. So. Um, if you want one of these old dark blues jumpers, I've got this in grey too. So jump on on the website and, and grab one of these, and that's pretty much it. And um, yeah, just keep up to date with all that, all the all the rants and, and everything. I love it. A lot of people messaging me about it. A lot of rants during the week, so um, I try to reply to them all, but um, can't. But there's just so many, especially after a loss. But um, now nah, I appreciate all the love and support. And um, yeah, if you haven't followed me yet, please do. Head on over to the old dark blues, guys. Do yourselves a favor, especially if you're a Carlton fan. Um, you got to get around the boys. They do some incredible work and, you know, that's what we try to do here on FanCast, try and get as many of the fan channels as possible because we are all fans, um, you know, fans of the Blues, fans of the Bombers, but ultimately fans of footy. So um, go footy, as Kevin Chitty would, <laughs> as, as would Kevin Chitty would say. So thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this potty episode here today. If you did, drop us a like subscription if you're new and hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos that we are pumping out on a regular basis if you're listening to us on a podcast platform an audio platform please review us we'd greatly we'll greatly love to see some positive reviews from you guys because it just encourages us to keep on going and to bring this content out to you because here we have a proper footy chat we'll see you all in the next one bye for now